Hi, I'm Rabia. And I'm Matt. And this is Sound Like on London TV. Yes, it is. Good morning, Matt. Good morning, Rabia. It's a morning of budgets and tight, tight budgets. Yes, so we did Nirvana without busting the bank a wee while ago now. Mm -hmm. And we were surprised at some of the feedback which said, you know, Kurt Cobain, isn't into his gear particularly, and it wasn't about having expensive stuff. So we thought we'd challenge ourselves to try and sound like Kurt Cobain for 500 quid. That's or pounds. under, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the UK. I, 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 to be honest, we don't know until we try, so let's go get some guitars. Let's have a go. So we're now looking for guitars. Yes, well, with a budget of 500 pounds, there are not too many options. There really aren't. So we have stumbled across this, which is the Fender Squire Bullet Mustang in this nice sparkly blue colour. Double humbuckers, Mustang style. It's 120 English pounds. Super thin body, isn't it? It's a very thin body. It's 120 quid, which means we'd have 380 left for the couple of pedals we need, plus an amplifier. I mean, we don't really have a lot of options, so I say let's do yeah, it. Also, but it, vibe-wise, vibe-wise, it's about there. But yeah. I mean, when you start looking at other things, I mean, you're talking 300 plus for a lot of the other squires. Yeah, like even this. Yeah. Yeah, this is three four nine. Three four nine, which is just not enough. Well, it's too much for doesn't leave us enough left to buy the other components. Yeah, exactly. Right, anyway, we've got the guitar. Let's go and find the amplifier. Let's do this. So I have an idea. What's your idea? I think we're pretty clear on which pedals we need for this challenge. Mm -hmm. And that, well, I say that, one of them at least. Yeah. So sure. last time we used a DS2, mm -hmm. as I seem to remember. Some of you guys said that we should use a DS1 instead. So that is apparently the more Kurt Cobain thing. He's both. But he changed it up, didn't oh, he? He changed so. it. All right, so we'll go DS1 tangent, to right? change it up then, shall so we? So we'll go DS1. But he also used a small clone for his chorus. Mm -hmm. So. But I'm thinking that we could just get a chorus, maybe a Tone City or something, something a little bit more affordable. Well, let's just work it out first. Amp, let's get the amp and then we'll know how much is left. Well, the reason We've I'm got 380. The reason, the reason I'm talking about pedals is that if we know what they are, then we'll know how much we have to spend on amps. Well, yeah, and I agree, but I do think that we should totally aim for the DS1 and the small clone. You and we, should, we just, should, just, should just say that's what we're going to get and we have to make the amp work. Okie doke. That's Fine. my opinion. What's your well, let's opinion? Let's just check out what a D how much is a DS1. So, we've travelled really far. We have, to the land of amplifiers. And at this budget, there are some options. We're looking for something that's a little bit more headroom. We always try and go for something giggable. We've stumbled across this, the Fender Champion 50XL. And... It has a great clean sound. It does. And if we're using DS1 for distortion, we my can, theory was... We can layer it up. Yeah. I don't necessarily think this is a bad thing. It's 189. It's not a katana. Pounds, yeah. <laughs> which everyone will be really chuffed about. I mean, in this price range, because we're thinking sub 200 for an amp, right? Really? It needs to be, yeah, we have about 380. Yeah, 380 left. Especially if you so want you the could, small We could probably rate to about 240, I think I'd say. And in the store, you've literally got the ID series from Blackstar, which personally I don't want to use. We've got the Marshall Code. Um, Marshall Code, which personally I don't want to use. We've got uh, Orange Crush. Yeah. I'm I'm kind of on the fence with that. Uh, yeah, and then there's the Vox, um, the AV15, is it? It's the kind of um, it's their it's yeah. their take on the, the katana kind, of kind of thing, thing yeah. which actually isn't bad because we definitely me and Pete shot those out a couple of years ago and they are pretty good. I just know that this has a decent full-bodied clean. clean, which at this budget it's quite important to get a good base. I think. Yes. This is it's make or break. Make our base by the sounds of it. It is. So let's, let's let's use this then. That cool. takes us up to the grand total of about three hundred and ten pounds. So okay, we just cool. Need to get some pedals. Buy the pedal cabinet here, and uh, the EHX display, as you can quite clearly see over here. We found the Neo clone. We forgot about the Neo clone. We did indeed. And how much is that? That is cheaper than the uh, small clone. It's basic. It's fifty nine pounds. There you go. It's made with the same sort of, it's basically similar components to create the tone. So I think, yeah, it's yeah, every little helps, you know. Let's save some pennies. Well, 59 plus 47 is just over 100 quid. So there you go, that's both the pedals we were after. Yes, and then, so we're on about 420, a uh, rough estimate, maybe 430. So that is definitely under 500 pounds, leaving some change for some picks, cable, and a gig bag, maybe. Yeah, should we go see if we can sound like Kurt Cobain? Let's try our best.
We're back in the video room. Yes, we are. In this budget adventure to sound like the awesome Nirvana. Yes. I was confused when we did the without busting because everybody said, uh, you know, and rightly so, you know, Kurt didn't give a, a, a hell about, um, I was going to swear, but I didn't. Yeah, yeah. He didn't save. care about um, expensive gear. He wasn't bothered, you know, he smashed half of it up every gig anyway. So it's kind of like whatever he got his hands on, he'd yes. use. Yeah. And kind that like was... pawn shop guitars style. Yeah. Really punk rock. And in this situation, we, you know, it's almost perfect band for this style of video. Totally, and especially because everyone hated our without busting. Yeah, they did. Yeah. <laughs> no jokes. <laughs> it was just a good chance to kind of try and redeem ourselves and try and take some of the principles you guys suggested. You yeah. Know, to, you know, take the budget ethos. Yeah. And I, th I hope it's come across well. <laughs> pointing out that the two things that I would change about this trick is the guitar and the amp. Two small components. No, well, hear me out. It's not because they're bad or they do a bad job. It's because I think the pedals are clearly, clearly victorious in this search to sure. find the Nirvana sound. And really what you, what you want is, I'd change it to a high headroom, clean amp or move with a bit of crunch and I'd just get a maybe custom shop version of that or I'd buy like a... Or maybe the Squire version yeah, or, for 350 yeah. quid. The know. point is that I'd keep them similar but really, it's down to these two, I think. Yeah. I really do. Because this guitar being the Squire Bullet Mustang, other than the way it looks, which is something that Kurt Cobain used, this style, mm. right? My point being that this is just a double humbucker guitar. Well, he's known for using lots of different Fender offsets. Yeah. Basically. Which some might have had P90s, some might have had single coils, some may have had humbuckers. It's really hard to know. Well, we, we also, with the Fender amp, that actually ended up being quite a good choice. Yes. Um, I read that he used a Fender deluxe reverb or something similar mm -hmm. but anyway fender amps on the first couple of albums yeah so that should get us relatively close as well as the ds1 yeah so the, the yeah and the, it's the champion 50xl which um we used exclusively on the clean tiny yeah. bit of reverb but really just on the clean nice uh and we we backed off the bass backed off the treble a bit and like i say the main the money maker here is the ds1 and the neo clone yeah. These two things in together make the sound, in my opinion. It's kind of a balancing act with the tone on there and the tone on here. It, yeah, it always takes a bit of tweaking, especially when you've got gear that can do, you know, there's a lot of components, yeah. so a lot of elements to change. Yeah. Um, but we're relatively close, I think. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, this is the sound of the amp. Straight into the amp, are you? It's worth pointing out this is in D standard. Yes. It's down tune it to play come, come as, as you are. are, yeah. Yeah. So um Um so yeah, I mean the strings are a little bit flappy, it's a bit pitchy because the, they're obviously not supposed to be in D standard. No, true. But it, pretty, it held its tuning pretty well and to be honest it plays great and it's like... It's such a mini body, isn't it? No, I know, it's, it's, a, and it's so it's thin. It's quite thin, it's, yeah, it's, I thought it was uh, like a three quarter size when I first picked it up because it was so light. Yeah, but actually to be honest, it's really not bad. For the money, especially you, yeah. you can't complain. Yeah, one hundred and nineteen pounds, I yeah. believe. And it's a nice color, actually. I like the color. Yeah, it's a premium color. It is sparkle in there. Anyway, now you've heard the guitar and the amp, we may as well show you what happens when we hit the DS One on. <laughs> Now, 
Nice. I mean, I feel like <laughs> it almost just does the whole job for you. Well, yeah, and for 47 quid. I know. It's, it's confusing. almost too easy. Yeah, and when we put on the tracks like Smells Like Teen Spirit, the mix, I mean, the speaker's in mono, but still you can hear the double track guitars and it's quite buried and there's just a lot of noise. A lot of drums and a lot of bass as well. Yeah, a lot of the, his guitar sounds are just noisy. But you know no what? No problem. It's great. I love Nirvana. It's just that it's one of those things when you're trying to do this, it's like, when it's isolated, is that close? It's a different thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, um, but the production still sounds really good. Mm. Gotta say, great yeah. drum sound. Right, so now we can show you the, the Neo clone, basically. Just like. You know, it's it's that, it sounds like that. It does, and I, I think he, Kurt Cobain was a big Brian Adams fan as well. Yeah, yeah, totally, it's a great tune. Huge. Um, the thing with that particular song, Lithium, mm. the the sound of the guitar to me sounds like it's a single coil neck mm. or something along that line, like a P90 or mm. something, which, which I tr basically went for the middle position because I felt it was the closest thing. Sure. But, we're, but outside of that, it's the nitty gritty, I think, Ultimately, trying to find a one size fits all for this kind of money mm. is a challenge. I think we've saved 20 pounds. So this rig was 420. 420 pounds. To get all this stuff. I mean, fair play. I mean, that is high flying quality for the money. And it's not even April 20th. 420. <laughs> How about your rig? I picked this, which is really quite heavy. That's why I made that stupid noise. Um, this is a huge, an Epiphone Thunderbird. The neck was so big at points, it's covering Beer's eyes, so he made some mistakes. <laughs> um, but it's a bolt-on, beautiful Thunderbird bass with a really nice flame on the neck. It is a really nice flame. Really yeah. nice. Yeah. Super cool. Uh, Chris Novoselic, 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 I think that's how you say it. Uh, played many a bass. He did have, a, I believe, a signature Gibson RD style bass. Um, so I thought I'd go with something Gibson. I know he used loads of different stuff through his career, but I believe at some point he did use a Thunderbird. This is a super cool bass, and it's going straight into this behind me, which is the Rumble 40 by Fender. Um, it sounds a little bit like this. There's a bit of a rumble from Down Under. There was. Provided by Matthew. A rumble in my bowels. So, so that would conclude our attempt to sound like Nirvana uh, under 500 pounds. I know, it's, we've done a few of these before and it's, it is, you can't really get much more affordable. Or can you? Yeah, you probably could a tiny bit but like a tiny bit. Could we do the most affordable rig ever? Well, the thing is, I think that this is probably the minimum before you start getting into the realms of amps that can't handle a gig. Because this, to be fair, can kick it pretty loud. Sure. Um, but what would be the most affordable gigable rig? If you, know, if you think you know your answer to that, put it in the comment one section amp, below. One amp, one pedal, one guitar. There you go. That's the challenge. Um, Maybe next time. Yeah, that would conclude this episode of How to Sound Like Nirvana. Did we sound close? Did it sound better than the without busting? You let us know. And let us know who also you'd like us to also sound like who. <laughs> <laughs> Links in the description box. And yeah, I've been Matt. I've been Rabia. And this has been Sound Like upon Anderton's TV. TV. 